Hey everyone, this is an introduction to acids and bases. We'll talk about what acids and bases are, what it means to be amphoteric, we'll identify conjugates of acids and bases, and then finally we'll look at neutralization reactions versus dissociation reactions, which are really easy to get confused and it's helpful to kind of separate them in our minds. So let's jump into what an acid is and what a base is. An acid is going to be a compound that readily donates a proton, and by proton I mean a hydrogen ion. A hydrogen ion, if you take a hydrogen atom and you remove an electron from it, all you have left is a single proton in the nucleus with no electrons. So an H plus ion we often just call a proton when talking about acids and bases. And here's an example. Hydrochloric acid is an acid because it won't stay as HCl. They'll separate and that chlorine will donate this hydrogen to something else, to a water molecule. And HCl is a strong acid because it's really good at separating. If only some of the molecules were to separate from their hydrogen, then that would be a weak acid. But hydrochloric acid is a strong acid because all of the HCLs will actually separate out into H plus and Cl minus, therefore it's a strong acid. Now whereas an acid is a proton donator, a base is a proton acceptor. So where does that H plus go? It's going to go to a base. Um, so any compound that's going to take a hydrogen from another molecule, that's going to be a base. An example of that is NH3. NH3 can accept a hydrogen. We see that here in this reaction. NH3 will accept a hydrogen ion or a proton and become NH4+. Plus. So NH3 would be a base. Now some molecules can be an acid or a base, and the most common example of that is water. Water can act as either, so we call that amphoteric. This first reaction is an example of water being an acid. The water is going to donate one of its hydrogens to the NH3 and then become hydroxide and NH4+. On the other hand, if H2O is with HCl, then H2O can act as a base. It's going to take a hydrogen from HCl, and so the HCl is just left with Cl-, but the H2O has now become H3O+, because it's taken an H+, from the H2O. So those are examples that show water being an acid or water being a base. It can be either, so we call it amphoteric. Okay, now we're going to identify conjugate acids and conjugate bases. The conjugates you'll always find on the other side of the reaction. So let's look at this reaction here. We have hydrofluoric acid, and it's in water, and it's going to produce these two products here. So let's identify our acid. HF, of course, is the acid. Water is going to act as a base because, well, HF is an acid. If water is with an acid, water's got to act as a base because that hydrogen from the HF has to have somewhere to go to. It is an equilibrium reaction because hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. That means in solution we'll have some HFs, but some of those, not all, that would be a strong acid, just some of those HFs will dissociate to become H plus and F minus. Now where does the H plus go? It's going to go to the H2O and become H3O plus. Now to identify the conjugates here, all you have to do is take the acid and find the species on the other side of the reaction that's the same thing but with the hydrogen removed. So I'm going to look over on the other side, and my F plus is the same thing, but it just had that hydrogen pulled off of it. So that's now going to be the conjugate base. So the thing that looks like the acid without the hydrogen, that's actually the conjugate base. The way that I think about this is if we went in reverse, this would have to accept a hydrogen in order to become HF again. So the F minus to go in reverse would have to act as a base. Therefore, we call it a conjugate base. Now to find the conjugate acid, take your base, which in this case is H2O, and add a hydrogen to it. Now you should have another species in solution on the right side that looks like the base but with the hydrogen added. And that's of course hydronium, H3O+, and so that would be our conjugate acid. So your acid will look like your conjugate base, and your base will look like your conjugate acid, either with the hydrogen added or hydrogen removed. So that's how you identify conjugate acids and bases. All right, next let's look at the two types of reactions that we can write for acids and bases. One of those is a dissociation reaction, and the other is a neutralization reaction. Let's start with dissociation reactions and talk about what they are. If you have an acid, like in a beaker, there's a dissociation taking place. You don't have to mix anything. This is just kind of the state of that acid. It's a way to describe what's actually going on in the beaker even though you're not mixing things and making some new reaction happen. All it takes is the acid molecule and water to be together. So if you have an aqueous acid, you have both of those things, and this is taking place even if you haven't done a reaction in the lab yet. Now there's two ways to write it. We're going to start with this first way, which is acid plus water, and it's going to give us a conjugate base and our conjugate acid, or hydronium. So for example, we'll have HA, which is, is just a generic acid, it could be any acid, plus water, 
and that hydrogen is going to be donated to the H2O, and so we'll have hydronium here, and then we'll be left with our conjugate base, A-. minus. So this would be an example of a dissociation. All we have is an acid, and it's in water. Or that could be a base in water, and we would have a base dissociation. Now if you went in reverse, then this would have to take one of its hydrogens and transfer back to the A-, minus, making HA, and leaving water behind from there. And of course, as a weak acid, this is going to be in equilibrium. We're going to have some of the HA and water form, and we're going to have some of the A- minus and hydronium form. But there's a simpler way to write this, and a more common way to write this, which is the second example down here. Notice it's almost the same thing, except for we don't have water. So this is kind of the one with water up here, and this is kind of the one without water down here. But it's really the same reaction, just described a little bit differently. In this case, we have the acid, just HA, and all we're writing is it dissociating into A- and H+. A- is still the conjugate base. And instead of a hydronium, H3O+, we're writing an H+. So which of these is really happening? Now, of the two, this first one is a more conceptually accurate. Whenever an acid dissociates, that hydrogen doesn't just float around in solution. It will bond to an H2O molecule and form a hydronium. But it turns out that in all the calculations and problems that we do, we actually can write it this quicker and simpler way, and it works just fine for all of our problems. So this second way will be the more common way and a, and a quicker way. But if you want to be the most conceptually accurate about what's really happening, the first way is a little bit better. Now the Ka expressions for each actually end up being basically the same thing. Let's take a look. In the first one, our Ka will look like this. We have hydronium and the conjugate base, which is A- minus here. And we find those on our product side. And then for our reactants, we just have HA because remember water is our solvent. And so we don't include that in our K expression. So we have hydronium times conjugate base over our initial acid form. And if we write the Ka expression for our second way to write this, we get something that looks very similar. The only difference between these two is that this one has an H+, plus, whereas this one has hydronium. But remember, what does H+, plus actually mean? Well, in reality, like we said, it's not just H+, plus floating around in solution. It's really H3O+, plus, but it's quicker for us to write H+, plus, and it works for all the problems that we solve. So we often use the second way. And so either of these are really the same thing. We can write it both ways. So that first way is more conceptually accurate, but the second way is more common and it's gonna be quicker for us. So I would say be familiar with both, but we use the second way more often than the first way. So that's an acid dissociation. That acid will split off a hydrogen and form a hydronium ion and the conjugate base. And this is happening in solution all the time if you have an acid. Now, a neutralization reaction, you got to mix some stuff. You have to take a base, and you have to take an acid, and you got to mix them together. So here's an example. If you have hydrochloric acid, and you add sodium hydroxide, and you mix those two together, suddenly you've got an acid, you've got a base, they're going to react. And this will always include a one-way arrow. It doesn't matter if these are weak or strong. If you take an acid and you take a base, they're going to go one way to form these products. And the products that they'll form is salt, and water. And in this case, we're going to form sodium chloride, which is table salt, but it could be any salt depending on what these acids are over here. And of course, it's going to form water. A hydrogen from the acid and a hydroxide from the base are going to come together to form H2O. And like I said, that always includes a one-way arrow. So keep these two separate in your mind. Whenever we're looking at acids and bases, we'll have to do dissociation reactions. And whenever we see a Ka expression, that goes with a dissociation reaction, such as this right here or this right there. And we also have a neutralization reaction. That's when we take an acid and a base and we mix them together in order for them to react and neutralize each other. And we form a water and a salt as a result of that. All right, so that's an intro to acids and bases. Thanks for watching.